onto our men, 40 to 44. We have four slots. Casey Arbenz. Looks like Casey Arbenz is going to Kona. For a triathlete, this moment is monumental. It is the realization of a dream. The culmination of years of effort to achieve the top prize in the world of Ironman. We're going to Kona. <laughs> a coveted spot on the start line of the Vega Ironman World Championship in Kalua Kona, Hawaii. It is where the world's best professional and age group athletes meet each year. And it is triathlon's holy grail. America, you're going to Kona. Pursued by countless triathletes at Ironman events around the world. Yeah. 40 individuals will make their Kona dream a reality at Subaru Ironman Canada. For those that punch their ticket, it is the feeling of a lifetime. Good morning, everyone. Race morning at Subaru Ironman Canada. Everyone here has their own mission. Some have one goal in mind, finish before the mandatory 17-hour cutoff time, cross the finish line, and become an Iron Man. Others hope to surpass previous performances, to get it done a little quicker than they have before. But there are many here with one specific goal, and that is to capture a qualifying spot to the Vega Ironman World Championship. Joanna Hudson is one of the few to have made it to Kona. Last year, she tried again, missing the roll down by just two positions. The past 12 months of training have been focused on this one day. Didn't sleep very well last night, um, but I guess you never really do. Cody Casey is hoping to make it to the Vega Ironman World Championship for the first time. Something his childhood classmates could have hardly imagined happening. As a 13-year-old, he weighed 200 pounds. When a doctor told his mother that he was clinically obese, the boy called Chubby Cody knew he needed to change. I was never athletic or gifted, you know. I just worked harder time after time. I trusted the process. Brian Vogia spent years dreaming of making it to the Ironman World Championship. In 2018, his training was on track. But two weeks before his Ironman race, his world was turned upside down when his wife, Michelle, was diagnosed with myeloma cancer. Making her way to the shuttle. Make her way. She's coming down. I tried to talk her out of coming, actually, this morning. It's going to make a pretty tough day for her. The amateurs are not the only ones with Kona on their mind. The professional women will race not only for the title here, but also for two qualifying spots to the Vega Ironman World Championship. This is the 37th edition of Subaru Ironman Canada from Whistler, British Columbia. Alta Lake will be the location of the first of the three disciplines, a 3.8 kilometer swim. At 5.50 a.m., the professional women get underway And so begins one of the longest days in professional sports. It will be another nine hours before the women's champion will be crowned. The professional men are on the other side of the continent, competing at Ironman Lake Placid, as the two races alternate professional fields. For the amateurs at Subaru Ironman Canada, their race is next. The months of training are in the past, all the pre-race morning details have been taken care of. Now it is a matter of waiting for your turn. It is a rolling start. The quicker swimmers are encouraged to be near the front. And that is where Cody Casey can be found. He is one of 91 competitors in the men's 25 to 29 age group. As one of the largest groups, they receive three qualifying spots to the Vega Ironman World Championship. Joanna Hudson competes in the women's 40 to 44 age group. 63 women, just two qualifying positions. Brian Vogie needs a top two finish in the men's 55 to 59 age group. Accomplish that, 
and the couple will be going to Hawaii. There you go. Let's do this. Our love story began on a dating site, and we started emailing each other. And yeah, we would have never met if it wasn't for that, and I'm just thankful we did. When we met, we just clicked and always have. Well, Michelle actually surprised me with a 40th birthday cruise. It's 14, 15 years ago. We both had never been to Hawaii, so we made it to all the islands, and then um, we knew that one day we would like to come back. I really dug it, training, the race, and but I do distinctly remember crossing the finish line and my first words out of my mouth were, don't ever let me do this again. Michelle fell and had a compression fracture of two of her vertebrae in her back. Ended up in the hospital and five days later having a diagnosis of multiple myeloma. It was like, what? Like, is it, I, was, I was personally in denial. I, I just, there's like, no, no, this is, this is, this is untrue. And it, it just, our, it, our life literally flipped. She then, you know, had to go through chemo and uh, stem cell harvesting in early December. And so I had to wear a back brace, she was immobile, I had to gain her strength back again, you know, essentially learn how to walk. Shortly after that, we decided we need something to look forward to come the summer. Whistler, we can drive there. He's my soulmate, and he's been a huge support, and I could not have gone through this on my own. She's my Iron Man, yes, absolutely. I'm her support crew for this, and she's my out-of-this-world support crew for what I'm doing. My goal for Ironman Canada is to get to Kona this year. This will probably be my final season of doing fulls. I think with uh, my multiple myeloma, he's had a different, like a change of heart, so maybe he wants to spend more time, like the two of us together. It is an incurable cancer and it will return to a level that requires treatment again in the future and our only hope is that Michelle is one of those people that are causing the time frames to extend and I in my heart and mind as well believe that will be the case. So if Brian does qualify for Kona he's going to race for the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation so I'd be very proud and honored to be there to cheer him on in Kona. It would, my heart would just explode. It'd be elation taking her there and just knowing, hey, it's time to relax. Forget about what's been going on for the last 16 months or so and let's remember what it was like to live. It's a beautiful day in Whistler for an Ironman, as the triathletes continue to make their way around Alta Lake. The 2019 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru, confidence in motion. The resort municipality of Whistler, and by Tourism Whistler. The professional women are wrapping up the first discipline. Canadian Heather Wirtel was second out of the water. However, she will be first to head out on the 180 kilometer bike. American Kelsey Woodrow, the swim leader, will begin the bike just a few seconds back as the race heads towards the mountains. In third, 48 year old Dee Dee Griesbacher. Incredible to see the Americans still competing in the professional ranks. She will move into the second discipline just one minute off the pace. 115 back is Canadian Melanie McQuay. The three-time Xterra world champion and former runner-up at Subaru Ironman Canada is well known for her cycling skills. However, early on, the story on the bike continues to be Canadian Heather Wirtel. 
one of Canada's most decorated Ironman athletes ever. Yet she has never won an Ironman race in her home country. A win here would really be a, a dream come true. But as always, it's a big ask. Ironmans are long days, it's tough, and so you, all you can do is go there and give your best and hope it works out. Wirtel started the bike with Kelsey Withrow just a few seconds back. The Americans still right there in second. Bib number one belongs to Jen Annette. She was second the last time the women raced here at Subaru Ironman Canada in 2017. She began the bike in seventh, five minutes back. This pass on Great Britain's Caroline Lisley, moving the Canadian into fifth place. She comes into this race with a clear agenda. The two goals would be to get my Kona spot, but to also come away with a win. I still have yet to have that big Ironman W, and it would mean the world for me to break that tape on Sunday. I've had a lot of podium finishes, which I'm not complaining about, but I'm really wanting that number one spot. Canadian Angela Nate is the X Factor. If she is on, she is among the world's very best. However, the past two years have been very trying for the British Columbia triathlete. She was stricken with Lyme disease in 2018. Her symptoms so severe that she could barely get out of bed, but she rebounded to finish eighth at the Ironman World Championship, only to see a return of the debilitating disease. This past February, I started having symptoms again. And so I went right back to my Lyme doctor and said, I want to annihilate this. <laughs> so I went back on antibiotics. But the story does not end there. The antibiotics caused low blood pressure. And after a training session, Nath fainted, breaking her right wrist so severely that it required the insertion of 14 screws and a plate. The cast was finally removed just two weeks prior to this race. Nath says she is healthy and ready to battle for the title. Her 10 minute deficit after the swim is starting to shrink on the bike. Heather Wirtel has reached the Subaru turnaround at the top of the Callahan Valley climb. She has opened up a gap on Kelsey Withrow. However, both women are being caught by Dee Dee Griesbauer. The American continues to surprise. The 48-year-old started the bike in third, one minute back. She is now within 30 seconds of the leader in the professional women's race at Subaru Ironman Canada. There are plenty of battles taking place with the various age group races as well. 27-year-old Cody Casey hopes to capture one of the three qualifying spots available in his division to the Vega Ironman World Championship. The Toronto triathlete was 59 minutes and 58 seconds in the water, placing him in fifth in the men's 25 to 29 age group, 6.30 out of first. It was the start he expected. The plan now is to move up on the bike. Edmonton's Brian Vogie had a solid swim as well. He will head out on the bike in fourth place, just 3.30 back of the leader. In his division, the men's 55 to 59 age group, there are 83 competitors chasing just two spots to Kona. Capturing one of them and taking his wife Michelle to the Big Island of Hawaii is his main objective today. Joanna Hudson completed the swim in just over an hour and 15 minutes. She is in 14th place in the women's 40 to 44 age group. Only two women in her division will make it to the starting line at the Vega Ironman World Championship. It is a quest that the Vancouver triathlete knows can't be accomplished without a strong team behind her. I grew up in West Vancouver, British Columbia. I started racing Ironman because my best friend, Steph Corker, uh, was an avid triathlete uh, turned professional. I realized very quickly that the only way I could spend time with her was if I learned how to swim, bike, and run. <laughs> through Steph and through B78, met some great girls who were training for Ironman Whistler, the full. I spent so much time training with all of them the next year, thought maybe the Ironman was in reach, so good as time as any. was awesome. It was actually like quite a joyful experience. The only goal of that race was to run the marathon and 
one of my girlfriends came up to me and she said, oh, you're doing really well. I was like, oh yeah, like, do you think I'm in like the top 10? She's like, I think you're second. I just kept going. It was unlike anything I had ever expected. Like Kona was never a conversation. It was finishing the race was a conversation. Jo qualified for Kona in her first Ironman attempt. And I think that just says it all about Jo. She's gonna show up and she laughed and smiled her way through that entire Ironman. The roll down, you just sit there like praying that the people that beat you have already got a spot. It's not about hoping anyone else failed, it's just hoping that they have other commitments that are more important. <laughs> I knew the importance of Kona to people that were avid triathletes, but I was this beginner that was never supposed to go. Kona was terrifying. <laughs> I, I, like, I'm not a good swimmer. The idea of swimming without a wetsuit, being like with all the pros there and you're like, all you know of them is their Instagram feed and they're just walking right past you like regular people. Jasper was there and he told me he's like, just run aid station to aid station and walk in the aid stations. And he really like walked me through it. The support group for any athlete, and you know, Joe's no exception, it's just crucial. Uh, it's really hard to do this sport on your own. I think that's one of the really neat things about Ironman is you'll see thousands of people out here cheering on their family members and friends and they'll travel great distances to do that. My boss, her husband and my best friend were at the finish line on the red carpet. I like stopped, I like had my moment, hugs, crying and went through the finish shoot and it was a really proud moment. Training for Ironman is a massive time commitment and you need help along the way and I would not be able to do it if it wasn't for my mom, my coach, my boyfriend and my best friends. Joanna says to get back to Kona, she will need the same mindset that was successful in 2017. Get down to business on the bike, be joyous on the run and no matter what, Never stop running. For now though, the marathon is still hours away, and every competitor knows there are a lot of challenges still to come on the bike as Subaru Ironman Canada rolls on. The professional women are now nearing the halfway point of the 180 kilometer bike at Subaru Ironman Canada. Few would have predicted this. However, Didi Griesbauer, the 48-year-old American phenom, is now second, right behind the leader, Canadian Heather Wirtel. Griesbauer has three top 10 finishes in Kona to go along with her three Ironman wins, including the title at Ironman Taiwan at the age of 44. And with this pass on Wirtel, the American, she is now the leader. Fellow American, Kelsey Withrow, has fallen well back, nearly six minutes off the pace, in fact, all the women are losing major time to the two women out front. Canadian Jenny Nett, the runner-up in 2017, once again being passed by American Jody Robertson as they continue to battle over fourth place. However, they are now 14 minutes back and at risk of falling out of contention for the win. It is even worse for BC's Melanie McQuaid. She was expected to move up on the bike. A 15-minute deficit will likely prove too much to overcome. And Angela Neath's misfortunes are continuing. She has crashed on the bike and is through for the day. Friesbauer and Wirtel are completely dominating the 180 kilometer bike here at Subaru Ironman Canada. 42 men and women will qualify today for the 2019 Vega Ironman World Championship. Two professional women with the remainder coming from the finishers of the various age groups. From the youngest to the oldest competitors, male and female alike. Making it to the Big Island is the dream of nearly every triathlete here and right around the globe. It's the best of the best. It is the elites of the elites. That's where you go to test yourself against the best in the world. I've been very fortunate to have been able to compete at the Ironman World Championships a few years ago. And to be honest, when I was a kid, I'm from Hawaii. I remember watching it on TV. 
uh, when it was barely a sport. <laughs> and thinking to myself, then I wonder if I can do that one day. I just remember watching the Kona videos on YouTube and like almost being brought to tears. Just that's so cool. I just want to go there and be with the pros, be with that, um, you know, at that level. Uh, and it's it's definitely something that um, seems almost impossible for me. It's the pinnacle of, of Ironman of triathlon. So this is my journey. About two months ago, I wrote I wrote it down, made a contract to myself that one day I'm getting to Kona. So. Uh, this race is my first uh, first attempt at Ironman, and then first of many, I suspect. I think going to Kona would be the cherry on top and racing there, but just the process of getting there, crossing the finish line, hearing my name, you know, as, as someone getting a slot, I think I'll just lose it. I'll just drop to the floor, just so excited. I think, one, it's the allure of it was the original race. And two, for a lot of people, I think it's just the challenge of let me see how far I can push my body and see what I can get myself to do. If I could ever qualify or even get a roll down spot for it, and I stepped off the plane in Hawaii knowing I was racing there, it would, it would mean a lot. Cody Casey may be relatively new to the sport, However, the 27-year-old is completely focused on achieving his ultimate triathlon dream, and that is to make it to Kona for the Vega Ironman World Championship. My name is Cody Casey. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I am 27 years old. I work as uh, an engineer, and my goal is to qualify for Kona World Championship. It has become a family part of our deal. You know, my, my parents come with me every race. They love it, number one supporters. I've, you know, I've pulled my sister into this now. She's doing her first full Ironman at Whistler, so I want my sister to have a good race. I've been pretty public with like sharing via social media. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Full Diary. The Full Diary, you know, Instagram and YouTube channel has been like an awesome way to interact with other athletes. Um, share my passion for the sport, get to know other people, get inspired from other people, you know, somewhat inspire other people, I guess you could say, which I never thought I would be doing, but it somehow has become that. It's, it's fulfilling. It's, it's, it's fun to feel like you make an impact on other people, I think, like, and that's gratifying. I grew up never really athletic. I, uh, I wasn't a runner, swimmer, or biker by any means. You know, I tried to fit in with team sports since I was uh, a chubby kid. I went to see a dietitian, and she told my mom that I was uh, clinically obese. So you know, I think I was 13 at that point, and I was five feet tall and weighed 200 pounds. You kind of feel like you're never the one that fits in directly. Kind of that's how I felt. Like I was, I was definitely bullied in school being a chubby kid. So it definitely left like an impact on me growing up. For me, like I dove into triathlon, like not only did it change my body in great ways and made me, you know, leaner, fitter and stronger, but it provided me with confidence to be good at something. You know, before I was just Cody, cuddly Cody, chubby Cody in high school, and now I'm, you know, badass, you know, Cody, Iron Man, who's chasing goals and going after it. For me to qualify for the Iron Man World Championship in Whistler is gonna take a well-executed race. It's all mental. It's so mental, the pain that you feel. Being able to go into that hurt locker and suffer and turn your mind off and know that you still have more left in you. Right now, it will mean absolutely, you know, everything. I want to come out enjoying it um, and knowing I gave it my all. Casey has moved up two positions on the bike in the men's 25 to 29 age group. He is currently in third. That position or higher would guarantee him a place on the starting line in Kona. But of course, there is still a lot of racing ahead. The 2019 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru. Confidence in motion. Hoka. And the resort municipality of Whistler. Welcome back to Whistler, British Columbia and the 2019 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada. American Kitty Griesbauer took over the professional women's lead on the bike almost an hour ago. However, Canadian Heather Woodtell has matched her pace during that entire time. 
And with the 180 kilometer ride nearly over, the six time Ironman champion is on the move. We're tell back in front as she looks to join her husband Trevor as a champion of Ironman Canada. We're both uh, from Vernon, British Columbia. We met each other in 95. I remember hanging out through grade 10, 11, and grade 12. I mean, I was pretty involved in bike racing. And, and I was pretty keen in academics, so we didn't. So he worked slinging coffees at Portillo coffee shop, so sometimes I'd go buy and order a coffee to chat a little bit. In 2002, we were both in Victoria. I'd say we started dating a year after that. And then, yeah, we just got closer and closer and started doing more things together. Trevor at that point was actually racing 24-hour mountain bike races and we were like, oh, let's go for a mountain bike ride. So uh, I actually crashed and landed really hard and almost broke my femur. And so I ended up in the hospital for a couple days and that's what kind of cemented the, the love part. of. Actually, he didn't bring me flowers. He brought me like leaves of this particular plant because I was a plant physiologist studying in school. So that was extra cool because he actually listened to me going on about plant biology. We started doing adventure races together just for fun. Yeah, and I mean, we were just very active and we wanted to do a little bit more competition. And so that's where triathlon sort of caught our eye. Like, oh wow, there's like professional triathletes or, you know, there's the world champs or if we get really good, you know, there's sort of a progression in the sport. So that was appealing. I proposed in 2004 and it was October 2006 and we both had qualified for the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii. And we thought that'd be a good place to have a honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> so we got married a couple weeks before that and then went to Kona and had horrible races. <laughs> yeah, well I think no, I, ended you up, I ended up six. 2008, or 27 or 28, we were kind of like, well, I is mean, this is this life? what we're going to be doing for the rest of our lives? And well, we were loving triathlon and we thought we could do well at it. So we just, well, let's just go for it and just, you know, leave the job, leave our, sell our house, buy an RV and... We sleep and eat and rest in the RV and the rest of the time we're out training. So we got to drive through a lot of the amazing landscapes and stuff that Western North America um, and just sort of live and experience life. So we were a little bit hurting financially by the end of 2009. So she won Ironman St. George in May 2010. And that was needed. <laughs> we, as a team, or yeah, we needed financially, it. we needed a, a win to keep us going. A huge moment to see her cross the line on such a difficult course. And... A huge highlight for me, of course, was when he won the Ironman here in Whistler in 2013. Definitely the, a big part of my career and uh, a goal I had dreamed about since probably 2009. And coming across the finish line and having Heather right there and my family on the sidelines is seeing her win numerous Ironmans by that point and then finally getting my own was, was awesome. We took the sport very seriously and we're really passionate about being good athletes, but we try not to take ourselves too seriously. I really enjoy macro photography and because of my biology background, I kind of get into my happy place is wandering around the woods looking at plants and trees and stuff. Heather over there, she's taking pictures of a tree. And he likes to tease me about it because in Rocky, I'm like on the ground taking pictures of moss or <laughs> trees or whatever. Taking pictures of another tree. Be very quiet. <laughs> Trevor is funny, relentlessly honest, and incredibly humble and my best friend. Heather is incredibly driven towards the goals she wants to reach. At this point, she's won six full Ironmans and 25 half Ironmans, so well over 30 professional Ironman wins. But you can swim up beyond like this swim area. I'm obviously here at Ironman Canada in Whistler out to win the race. Trevor won the first edition and it's now the last edition in Whistler. It'd be pretty cool if I could win the last one. Um, and incidentally, she was a support crew for me there in 2013 and I'm her support crew this year, so maybe it'll work. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, for me that would be huge. I would love to, to have a big win in, in Canada for sure. 
Heather Wirtel has completed the bike. One more discipline remains, the marathon, 42.2 kilometers. Dee Dee Griesbauer will make her way into transition two in second place. Her deficit to start the run, one minute and 11 seconds. To this point, Heather Wirtel has executed her race to near perfection. She has the lead, but it is her advantage over the top runners in the field that is most impressive. For Dee Dee Griesbauer, the run has never been her best discipline. However, she has done the job on the bike, and now she will look to hold on to a podium position, something impressive at any age. To be in this position at 48, even more so. Janin is about to complete the bike in third, but she will be nearly 16 minutes behind Wartel. Catching Graysbauer for second will be the first objective. The American has built a 14 and a half minute advantage over her nearest pursuer. The veteran has proven her resilience at Ironman races during her impressive career. Up front, Rotel looks to be in complete control. She has added to her lead over the American. Now, two minutes and counting. This is the 37th edition of Subaru Ironman Canada. The age group athletes now spread right across this beautiful course. Many still have hours to go on the bike. But for those near the back, they have to complete the second discipline within 10 and a half hours from when their race began. Otherwise, their pursuit to become an Ironman on this particular day will come to an end before the run even begins. Others have already made it onto the run for the final discipline, a marathon. Every athlete has to complete their entire race within 17 hours. Do that, and forever, you will be an Ironman. That is, of course, the most important goal for any triathlete, to finish no matter what. But there are other objectives as well. And for those that are among the quickest in their respective age group, that means chasing one of the 40 age group qualifying spots available at Subaru Ironman Canada to the Vega Ironman World Championship. To achieve that requires an incredible level of commitment and a near perfect race day. The competition in each and every age group is simply that tough. Cody Casey is in one of the fastest divisions, the men's 25 to 29. Professionals are known to come from this age group. For the Toronto triathlete, though, his focus is on one thing, qualifying for Kona. The past 12 months have been dedicated to that very goal. If I were to be able to get there, and it's just proof that, you know, the Iron Man slogan, anything is possible, truly is. I'm grateful to be here, and I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get there. There are three spots available in his age group. Starting the run, his deficit to the leader was just 45 seconds. However, there are others just a few minutes behind. The goal remains to finish third or better, and that will require a solid marathon. Ah. Brian Vogie has completed the bike, the second to do so in the men's 55 to 59 age group. He is 17 minutes behind the leader. For everyone coming into transition, there are things that need to be taken care of. The focus is to get them done as quickly as possible, and then get back out on the course. As Logie heads out onto the final discipline, he is well positioned to secure one of only two qualifying spots in his age group for Kona. Should be right down here somewhere. There she is. Where am I, Mitch? Fifteen behind the lead. Second. Second. Woo, Brian! For years. Brian hoped to one day qualify for the Ironman World Championship. But when his wife was diagnosed with cancer, that became the furthest thing from his mind. But now, he wants it more than ever. The difference this time, though, it is for his wife, Michelle. My heart would just explode. It'd be a nation. Taking her there and just knowing, hey, it's time to relax. Forget about what's been going on for the last 16 months or so. Joanna Hudson is having an amazing race as she works away on the marathon. 
she begins the run just 45 seconds behind first place. She is now the leader in the women's 40 to 44 age group. With the rolling starts, and sometimes not noticing if you are being passed or passing a member of your age group, there can be some uncertainty as to what exact position you're in. The only thing you can control is your own pace, and so the push towards the finish line for those looking to qualify for Kona will be all out to the very end. Heather Wertel took over the race during the closing kilometers of the bike. Since that time, the Canadian has increased her advantage over Griesbauer. Now, more than 13 minutes. Winning an Ironman is huge. We just got six under her belt already, but another one is, is always good. She put a lot of work into this one, so just seeing her getting it done and putting the work in every day, I'm sure it'll be huge for her just to come across that line first. American Didi Griesbauer has just lost second place to Jen Annette. She has no answer, as she can only watch the Canadian pull away. For Griesbauer, a place on the podium is still a possibility, although she is vulnerable to losing that as well. Jane Annette is running faster than any other woman. However, she came off the bike with a 16-minute deficit to the leader, and the gap is just not coming down quickly enough. There are no concerns, at least not from the fellow competitors for Heather Wurtel. A 12-minute advantage, late in the run. It's her race to win. The 2019 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru, confidence in motion, Hoka, and by Tourism Whistler. Many of the athletes are making their way around Green Lake. The conditions have been incredible all day here in Whistler, as the marathon continues at Subaru Ironman Canada. Edmonton's Brian Vogue continues to battle in the men's 55 to 59 age group. With two qualifying spots available to the Vega Ironman World Championship this year, he's in a great position. He's closing in on the leader. And more important, he has opened up a comfortable advantage over third place. Vancouver's Joanna Hudson has taken over first place in the women's 40 to 44 age group as she works away on the second half of the marathon. If she can hold the lead, she will not only punch her ticket to Kona, she will win her age group as well. Come on, go right to the finish. Let's go now. Come on, right to the finish. She had a great day, like right from the start. You know, she's always a bit back out of the water, but she had a super strong bike, came off in, I think, third, uh, but not far down, and then she's a great runner, and she's super tough. It's close, though. The second place is not far behind. Unfortunately for Toronto's Cody Casey, He's falling back on the marathon. He is now third, the final position that would guarantee him a slot allocation to the Vega Ironman World Championship. And the man in fourth, he is tracking Casey down. An Ironman is never over until it's over. But Heather Wurtel seemed to be in control the entire day. She completed the swim just seconds out of first. Wurtel came off the bike with the lead and the Kelowna BC triathlete was never challenged on the marathon. Heather Wertel with her first ever Ironman victory in her home country. Wertel is the 2019 Subaru Ironman Canada champion. Her husband Trevor, the 2013 champion, will place her finisher medal around her neck, just like she did for him six years ago. She was the runner-up in 2017, when the professional women last raced here. Jen Annette with another incredible effort in Whistler as she clocks the fastest run of the day to capture second place. It will be an American in third. However, it is Kelsey Withrow with the late pass on the run as she grabs the final position on the podium. It may not be a podium result, but 48-year-old Didi Griesbauer was nothing short of incredible on this day. A gutsy performance by the Boulder triathlete as she left it all out on the course in taking fourth place. Heather Wertel in a time of 9 hours, 20 minutes and 41 seconds for her seventh Ironman title. Jen Annette takes second 
703 off the pace, followed by Withrow, Griesbauer, and Jody Robertson in fifth. The Canadian women take the top two spots on the podium at the 2019 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada. And congratulations to Mexico's Reynard Picard. The 39-year-old age group competitor is the top overall athlete as he breaks the tape in a time of nine hours, nine minutes, and 26 seconds. The final drive to the finish line when we return to Subaru Ironman Canada. The finish line at Subaru Ironman Canada. Getting here has been the main goal since this event began at 5.50 a.m. For most, it is a moment of pure joy. Yet for some, the day did not play out exactly as hoped. For Cody Casey, his troubles began on the run as he fell from second place to fourth in the men's 25 to 29 age group. Now he needs one of the top three to choose to not validate their spot in Kona. Only then would it roll down and provide Casey the opportunity to go to the Vega Ironman World Championship. It will be a long night waiting for tomorrow's slot allocation. Joanna Hudson has qualified for Kona. She was there in 2017. She will be back in 2019 for her second trip as she wins the women's 40 to 44 age group in a time of 10 hours, 52 minutes, and 23 seconds. And you, you dance between a 30 second and a two minute that whole marathon. And that is some fancy dancing. And it is all smiles for Brian Vogue as he completes his race at Subaru Ironman Canada. There to medal him, Michelle. Brian, welcome back. You are an Ironman. Let's get you some water. Oh, oh, so proud of you. What are we end up? You're amazing. Brian wins the 55 to 59 age group, securing the Vogue's trip to Kona. Mine lasted 11 hours and a few minutes. Hers has been for over a year. Who's the Iron Man, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's right. Look at the hair growth, beautiful, huh? <laughs> Wish I could say the same. For others, the race is still hours from completion. As the sun begins to set, the push towards the finish line continues. 3.8 kilometers in the water, 180K on the bike, and finally this, a marathon. To make it to the finish line, each athlete must swim, bike, and run. A total of 226 kilometers. Do that, and you join a very exclusive group. I'm gonna be an Iron Man. <laughs> the feeling after, and the gratification of all the hard work, <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world. These men and women certainly agree. As daylight gives way to night, they continue to come through the finish line. Those that arrive in the final hour, they receive cheers as big as the very first. The professional women's champion, Heather Wartell, along with her husband, Trevor, also a winner of this race, have returned to join in light hour celebrations that will continue right up to the very last finisher. The day after Subaru Ironman Canada, as the award celebrations wrap up, there is just one final item remaining, the slot allocation and roll down. The roll down refers to when someone that could have secured a spot to the Vega Ironman World Championship chooses not to. Thus, the slot rolls down to the next in line. On to our men, 25 to 29, we have three slots. This is what Cody Casey is hoping for. He needs just one of the men in his age group to pass up that opportunity. However, they all quickly take their slot allocation. Jordan Roby, you're going to Kona. Cody's Kona dream is over. And 
for now as he heads up to offer his congratulations. I know he'll get there. Yep. It just wasn't meant to be today, but I know he'll get there. But yesterday was a personal pass, so that's a victory. Oh, it being Absolutely. on the stage is like amazing. He's never got on the podium, so I am incredibly proud of him, and I know he's proud of himself. He's just disappointed right now, but he did an amazing race. As a rookie, Joanna Hudson says she felt overwhelmed competing in Kona. This time, she will travel there as the champion of her age group and fourth overall among the amateur women. Ryan Bogey. Ryan Bogey, there it is. Come on up to We're going. Ryan and Michelle will be heading to Kona for the championship. And when they finally get there, the first priority, celebrating Michelle's birthday. Whistler, British Columbia has been an incredible host of this event and will forever be a part of the fabric that makes up Subaru Ironman Canada as it moves to a new location next year. We are so thankful to the, the municipality of Whistler for hosting this event for the last seven years because without a host community, this event could have easily gone away. I did the first one in 2013 and then finishing here in 2019, so I'm pretty excited about that. The terrain here is incredible and the, the scenery is spectacular and um, you know the volunteers are just exceptional so it's just a world-class venue for any kind of race. It's been a great place to come and race for the last uh, few years and uh, it'll be sad to see it go so thank you very much. I just want to say a huge thank you to Whistler for providing an amazing world-class venue and a world-class experience for all the athletes that come and race Ironman Canada in Whistler. Subaru Ironman Canada returns to Penticton, British Columbia in 2020, where this historic event, one of the oldest in the world, began back in 1983.